Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India project on econometric modeling. Today we will discuss multicollinearity problems. In the last couple of lectures we have discussed the details about the econometric modeling that to bivariate analysis, trivariate analysis and multivariate analysis. And uh, everywhere we use ULS techniques to estimate the model and we consider for the fitness of the models so far as a best fit is concerned and every time we start with OLS assumptions and end with the checking all these assumptions but you know perfectly we have not discussed anything you know in any particular problem regarding assumption till now so today we will highlight one of such problems after the estimation through this OLS technique so, one of the interesting problem is called as a multicollinearity. Multicollinearity itself is a multivariate problems. Okay. So, for uh, for the beginning we have start means we have started with you know bivariate modeling, trivariate modeling and econometric uh, sorry multivariate modeling. So, for the bivariate is concerned there is a one dependent variable and one is independent variables and that is the starting point of econometric modeling. But when we start with the bivariate setup, where there is one dependent variable and another independent variable, then obviously there is no question of multicollinearity. But when we move to trivariate model or multivariate models, then the problem of multicollinearity can be generated. Okay. So, now we like to know how is that particular concept, what are the problem associated with this particular multicollinearity and how we have to detect and what are the solution for this problems. Is it genuine or is it mandatory that you have to remove or you have to go ahead with these problems that we have to discuss in details today's lectures. So, the thing is that multivariate multicollinearity is a multivariate problems and that too it is a in the right side of the problems. So, that means when we fit a multi econometric model then obviously whether it is a bivariate setup or multivariate setups. So, every times y is in the left sides that is considered as a dependent variables and x s are in the right sides that is called as a independent variables. If there is a 1 x and there is a y then it is called as a bivariate. So, when 1 y then 2 x then it is called as a trivariate then 1 y with more x means more than 2 then we call it a multivariate analysis. But you know if you start with a bivariate to multivariate in every stage you find y is in the left sides that is always considered as a dependent variable and that to one every time. So, that means we are discussing here the entire problem with respect to one dependent variables and uh, you know right now we will discuss so many problems again with respect to one dependent variables with a you know one independent or many independent variables. But there is another system called as a uh, structural equation modeling or simultaneous equation modeling, where the dependent variables cannot be one, so it can be many also. That means, in the left side, there is a series of variables y1, y2 up to say yn, and in the right side, there is a series of independent variables say x1, x2 up to xn. So, then we like to know how each variables are interdependent to each other. 
but you know when you go for a pure multivariate analysis then the classification of dependent and independent may not be very you know handy because when one uh, when they are considering as a in interdependent to each other then it is very difficult to analyze which one is this spe specific dependent variable and which are specific independent variables okay so that means even if in the x, x sides if two variables are uh, correlated each, each other then obviously within that two within that two variables one may be dependent and another is independent so that is how the problem is more more and more complex so with this basic background we like to start what is all about this multi collinearity problems okay so multi collinearity so uh, the term itself will give an indication that it is a multivariate problems so now we start with a multivariate system then we will discuss what is all about multi multi collinearity problems and how you have to sort out its solutions okay so let's start with a multivariate problem so for a multivariate problems let's start with y equal to function of function of x1 x2 x3 up to xk okay where y is considered as a y1 y2 up to y n and x 1 is considered as a x 1 1 x 1 2 up to x 1 n then x 2 considered as a x 2 1 x 2 2 up to x 2 n and continue ok then x k is equal to that means every time there is a obviously function ok function between or you can say sorry uh, y is this much then x is this much is a set of series then this is x1 xn equal to uh, x uh, uh, ok we can call it xk ok xk xk1 xk2 xk2 then continue xkn ok so this is how the system all about so that means we are considering a multivariate problems where uh, there are uh, uh, a k number of independent variables and one dependent variable that is y ok so where y uh, has a sample y1 y2 up to yn and x1 has a sample x11 x12 up to x1k uh, similarly uh, x2 has a sample x21 x22 up to x2k similarly continue for k series xk1 xk2 up to xk1 uh, kn ok so that means we are considering k number of independent variables and where n represents number of observations. So, by default the starting of this problem, so we have to assume the standard assumption is that all the variables have same sample observations. So, that means for y there, there is n samples, x1 there is n samples, x2 there is n samples and you know xk there is n samples. If the sample size is different for each variables or various variables then obviously there is a serious problem that problem is it means the problem itself is inconsistent ok so to make the consistent you have to you know apply plus minus to means you decrease the sample or increase the samples then you make the structure where all the variables has similar sample size ok or same sample size so if it is so then you have to proceed ok so now with this particular background so what is our models so now we will fit a multivariate model so y equal to summation beta i x i i equal to 1 to n plus beta 0 plus u ok so this is the multivariate model so where y is a dependent variables ok then x i is independent variables ok beta is the slope slope to the independent variables ok then beta 0 is the intercept that is otherwise called as a supporting component to this particular y supporting uh, uh, instruments or uh, this is u stands for error correction error terms ok so now so this is the pure multivariate systems where y is e summation uh, beta i x i plus beta 0 plus u ok so where y is e dependent variables beta is the slope 
slope factors, uh, slope components, x i is the independent variables, beta 0 is the intercept and u is the error term and this model is purely in implicit format. Okay. So, let it put it in a explicit format. So, it will be coming beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus continue plus beta k x k plus u. Okay. So, this is the this is the pure multivariate models with k number of independent variables. Okay. So, now we have to see what is the structure of this econometric model with you know k independent variables and y dependent variables. If it is so, then how is the proper structure? So, that means the starting point is here y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus okay, beta k x k plus u okay, error term. Error term obviously will be always there. So, now this is the pure two regression equations. So, now we, we, we the next step is to have the estimated models for that we have to apply so many techniques like you know OLS, GLS, WLS, MLE etcetera etcetera. Okay. But till now what we have discussed is the application of OLS technique. Again we have to discuss here also OLS technique and we have to see by using OLS technique how quickly we can have the best fitted models. So, the moment we will apply various technique, then the technique itself based on certain assumptions and that assumptions uh, will lead to lots of serious problems. Okay. So, that is this is one of the assumptions we are going to verify with this particular multicollinearity problem. So, I will highlight what are the assumptions and how we will come to this particular multicollinearity issue. So, in the meantime, our standard you know multivariate model is like this y equal to beta 0, beta 1 x 1, beta 2 x 2 up to beta k x k all right. So, now after OLS technique after OLS technique then the model will be transport to uh, transport to estimated model. So, then uh, accordingly the estimated model will be y head ok we call it y head where y head equal to beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x 1 plus beta 2 head x 2 ok plus continue beta k head x k plus u. Okay. So, this is the standard estimated models uh, sorry uh, u is not here okay. because the moment you will estimate then obviously you will be removed. The way we minimize the error sum squares then we will get the estimated model. So, obviously in the estimated model there is no such u component. u component is only two regression line. We like to know what is the percentage of u involved in this particular models. If the percentage is you can say very high then the model cannot be considered as a best. So, the mod the percentage if the percentage is less means u, u impact is very less then the model can be considered as the best provided other things can be on the right track. Okay. So, in the meantime here our basic one basic objective is to check what is the error sum and you, we, we every time we have the objective to minimize the error sum squares and the way we will minimize the error sum square we will automatically get the best fitted model that is the process or you can say systematic approach to econometric modeling. So, now the moment you will get this particular uh, you know issue then obviously there are two steps for you. So, it will give you two different paths okay, to go for the best fitted models. So, means once you get the estimated models so you are not sure whether this model is perfectly okay for you or not. So, in the uh, to know this uh, this particular task, so you, you you have two different path, and ultimately you have to go to different path, and finally you will come to a conclusion. That means you have to start from here this side, and you have to start from this side. Ultimately, you will join some place, then ultimately you will get the you can say conclusions. Okay. So this particular side is called as a specification test. Okay, so, we in this side we have to check the specification, uh, you have to go for specification test in the in this sides you have to go for goodness fit test okay, GFT goodness fit test. Okay, it is otherwise called as a ST specification test. So, uh, once you have the estimated model, so the moment the moment you, you get the estimated model then of course, you have to test it whether it is considered as the best models and can be used for policy purpose. Okay. So, for that 
So, you have to go for specification test and uh, goodness fit test. So, specification test what is mean by specification test? That means, uh, this specification test is nothing but to judge the significance of the significance of the parameters, okay. significance of the parameters. Okay, this idea, uh, the specification test objective is to check whether the parameters are statistically significant. And GFT test is a to know the significance of the overall fitness of the model. So, it will give you the significance of overall fitness of the model, okay. fitness of the model. So, that too it is does by R square and adjusted R square. Okay. So, R square is a coefficient of determination and uh, uh, accordingly we have to see whether the R square is statistical significant or not. Okay. So, in the specification test we, uh, we usually use T statistic to check the significance of the parameters and in the uh, other side for GFT we use F statistic to check the overall fitness of the model. So, that means R square should be statistically significant in the right side for GFT goodness fit test and in the other side. So, we have to apply T statistics and to know the significance of each parameters at a, a, a individual rate. Okay. So, that means we like to know beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 like this uh, individual you know uh, coefficient should be statistically significant and for that we have to use T statistics. Okay. And for overall fitness of the test we have to use the R square statistics. So, together so we have to see how quickly will we have the solution. If both will go in the same way or as per your expectation then obviously, the model can be considered as the best. So, that means if it is true okay if it is true means if uh, the condition is satisfied and the, if this condition is satisfied then we will get the best fitted models okay best fitted model bfm <coughs> okay so this particular model is called as a best fitted models however uh, in real reality the situation is something other way around that means your expectation is to make the estimated model or to have the best fitted models as per the significance of the parameters and overall fitness of the models. This is your expectation, but it may not be uh, possible. Okay. Sometimes there may be some of the components which can you can say divert from that objectives. So, what are the situations? So, that situation may lead to serious issues or serious problems in the econometric modeling. Okay. So, that means, now we have two different specifications. Okay. So, means two different uh, altogether problems. Okay. So, what is the problem? First problem is, so that means, when we will call the model best fitted model, then it must uh, it must fulfill two conditions. Okay. First condition, all the parameters means first condition is all the parameters should be statistically significant and R square must be statistically significant at a higher rate. Okay. So, that means that is that means F statistic F so statistics should be a absolutely very high and here T of all these beta coefficients should be absolutely high and at the end all the beta heads should be significant at the high rate and at the end all uh, means the R square itself will be highly significant at a higher rate. If not, then there is a problem and that pro that means that model cannot be considered as the best fitted model. So, that, that means now the question is what are the what are such problems. So, then we have to check what are the possibilities from these possibilities you will face the problem. So, that means we have two different components all together. So, one is significance of parameters and overall fitness of the models. So, now, so there are few uh, you know uh, few chances that all parameters cannot be statistically significant or you can say R square cannot be statistically significant. So, in the first case if if few few beta are significant few beta are significant and R squares followed by 
and R scale followed by F is significant, is highly significant, is highly, highly significant, okay, highly significant, and R scale followed by F is highly significant. That means here uh, we we are you know uh, we are going together. Okay, so that means we are going overall fitness of the model and we are going the specification test. So that means in the first, if all these betas are significant and R square is significant, then we have the best fitted models. Okay, so we have to go, uh, we have to go ahead with this problem. Means a uh, 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 forecasting issue etc. But if few betas are significant and R square is satisfied here very high and highly significant then the problem is very complex you cannot say that this model will be considered as the best okay this is one such issue where model cannot be considered as the best okay second issue if all betas all betas are significant and r squares followed by f is relatively very low relatively very low and not significant and not significant respectively okay so that means you see here all the parameters should be significant and r square should be significant so now if not then there there are two different possibilities so first possibility is let's say out of all betas, few betas are significant and other sides R square is substantially very high. That means, substantially very high means the value of R square will be very close to 1. Okay. It is it, it tends to means it clo very close to 1. Okay. So, that means it is extreme end. So, then and if it is coming extreme end then obviously, F will be accordingly very high okay, because F is the function of R square. So, that means, f calculate f statistic depend upon the values of r square. If r square is very high, then f will be by default very high. If a r square is very low, then by default f is very low. So, that means, so r square is a very strong component, is considered as a, a strong component to check this particular issue. So, that means, if by any chance, if few betas are uh, not significant and in the same times, r square is very high and f is very high. Uh, means at R square is highly significant, then there is a serious problem. So, in that pro in that case, model cannot be considered as the best. This is one option or the one such problems. And second such problem is let us assume that all betas are statistically significant, but on the other side, R square is very low, and followed by F is also very low and also not statistically significant or statistically significant at, at very very low rate okay so that means in that case the problem cannot be considered as the best okay so oh, what is the final conclusion so final conclusion is this model estimated model has to be re-estimated again to get the model again best fitted okay so this is how the process is all about but now for this particular setup so far as the first part is concerned it is very frequent in the econometric models okay means there is there is a possibility that few betas are significant and few betas are not significant okay so that means if say out of 5 if 3 betas are significant 2 betas are not significant or vice versa and in the same times r square will be relatively very high and followed by f is relatively very high but if beta um, but in the second case if beta are significant all beta are significant then r square is very low and followed by you can say uh, uh, f statistic is very low then in that case this uh, means it is very rare situation it is very occasional and very exceptional okay it is a totally very exceptional that means why it is so exceptional you see here when we really go for r square statistics R square because here why exceptional so in the first case beta heads are all significant are all significant okay this is the first uh, instant okay then in the second case in the second case R square and F okay or adjusted R square uh, uh, adjusted R square F 
So, R square is calculated by the ratio between ESS by TSS. Okay. So, adjusted R square is 1 minus 1 minus R square into n minus 1 by n minus k. Okay. And similarly, F is calculated by the ratio between ESS by RSS. Okay. But you remember ESS, ESS is a function of basically the function of excess only. Okay. So, that means the value of ESS depends upon the a depends upon this a structure of x only means the status of x only because uh, what is ESS? ESS means explain some squares ok. So, now tot, uh, explain some square and total some square. So, when we will calculate r square then obviously, we have the ratio ESS by TSS, but you know by default TSS is always 1 every time ok because uh, we have already checked it here let us take a case here. So, we start with here y and x, this is a dependent variable structure, this is indi independent variable structures, okay. this is dependent variable structure and independent variable structure. So, now how means my intention is how quickly we can proceed you know one uh, uh, means uh, how quickly we can extend the status of the model that is from bivariate to multivariate. So, let us the beginning is y and x that is the uh, that is the initial setup of this econometric model if it is only one variable then economic model does not work uh, at all. Okay. So, that means, the starting point is obviously two variables and that two dependent classification independent classification. So, here we are assuming that y are the series of dependent classification and x are the series of independent classification. So, now uh, in, in the meantime you know particularly today's discussion or last couple of dis lectures discussion every time we are assuming that one y with a series of or you can say uh, one or series of independent variables. So, now if you start with the one dependent with the one independent then one dependent with the many independent then uh, how is the setup and how quickly we can extend and what are the problems and what are this you know uh, serious issues we have to uh, detect there. So, that means, if the uh, if the structure is uh, y with x then you will call it a bivariate modeling. Okay. So, similarly let I will uh, in fact, instead of x I will put it here x 1, because uh, all together we are discussing here multivariate problem and this is one of the partition or this is one of the deductive part of this particular issue. So, now y equal to x 1 this is the starting process let us say it is a uh, case 1. So, okay, this is case 1 or st uh, step 1. Okay. Then next step, so y equal to x 1 and x 2. So, that means, we try to increase one after another variables in the system. So, then in the third case uh, it is x 1, x 2 and x 3. Okay. In the fourth case y is x 1, x 2, x 3, okay, x 3 then x 4. So, it will be continue like this. Okay. So, that means, so this is bivariate system then this is trivariate system then all uh, accordingly it will increase and we will call, call as a multivariate systems. Okay. So, now uh, if uh, this is, this can be one model, this can be another model, this can be another model, this can be another model. Now, our approach is bivariate to multivariate that is how that the entire discussion is the movement from bivariate econometric modeling to multivariate econometric modeling. So, multivariate econometric modeling. So, actually uh, um, it is better to write multivariate econometric modeling. Okay. So, multivariate econometric modeling. So, now what is ultimately a you know problem here? So, once you move here you know y x 1 to y x 1 and x 2 and then y x 1 x 2 x 3 then obviously, the system is very accurate and very perfect how quickly you have to generate this solution and various problems. So, now uh, uh, our issue is here ESS and TSS you know TSS is simply summation y squares. Okay. So, that means, it is nothing but summation y minus y bar all square. So, where this is this is applicable for this model, this is applicable for this model, this is applicable for this model, this is applicable for this model. Okay. So, now whatever your problem size altogether, whether it is you know uh, bivariate or trivariate or multivariate, in every case uh, in this similar problems or you know just we are adding one after another pro, uh, variables. For instance, uh, I am just going to highlight one problem here stock price with you know uh, its determinants uh, 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 means this particular problem we will discuss in the multicollinearity issue. 
So now uh, when uh, when we will start with the stock price, then uh, you have to find out who, what who, which one is the most important determinant. Then obviously we have to consider first variable say x one that ones. Okay. So later on we will check it uh, with respect to their significant level of significance. Okay. So the status of a particular variable determine uh, can be examined or weightage of a particular variable can be examined by the estimated coefficients and it's the significance levels only. So, by the way we can judge the relative uh, weightage of this particular factor to the dependent variable. So, now in this particular you know setup, so we like to have a problem here stock price then one of the most important determinant is called as a you know a index of in industrial production IIP. Okay. Then uh, there are another variable say money supply, then there are another variable say called as inflation uh, rate of inflation, then exchange rate these are the factors which can you know uh, affect the stock price this is how we have borrowed from the lots of theoretical knowledge so now you see uh, so now if i will plot all these uh, you know six uh, variables in this particular sequence this if it is a stock price then obviously this should be you can say iip Indust index of industrial production then uh, the same stock price then we are integrating stock of uh, iip with let's say another variable money supply then similarly in y case so, uh, then it is a stock price already de designated. So, obviously, x 1 is already designated IIP, x 2 is already designated money supply, then x 3 is another variable say inflation. Okay. So, this is how we have to add one after another variable, but you remember once you proceed from 1 to uh, first uh, to this fourth head, then obviously, every time BAC, BAC, BAC is there means stock price, stock price, stock price are there. So, that means what we will go mathematically every times uh, the uh, in the, uh, the uh, left side component is y y y so that means whether you are here or whether you are here or whether you are here every times you have the same uh, summation y square okay so it will not vary however in the other side ess will vary so that means for this ess will be something different for this ess will be something different let it be called it y1 uh, sorry ess1 ess2 then this is ess3 uh, this is called as a ESS4, uh, completely different problem and in the same times we will call it here uh, TSS1, TSS1, TSS2, TSS3, TSS4, okay, let us say TSS4, but in, in this in the, the TSS1 is this one, TSS2 this one, the, the TSS is this two, this is this. So, that means here every time y, 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 if you will call it here y1, y, y2, y3, y4 in that sequence. <laughs> then every time so we are assuming that or it is by default y 1 equal to y 2 equal to y 3 equal to y 4 is equal to say y. Okay. So, this is means one variable. So, every time summation y square is you know more appropriate to use there, so, but in the other sides. So, ESS 1, ES 2, ESS 2, ESS 3, ESS 4 these are not at all equal. Okay. So, that means here ESS 1 not equal to ESS 2 not equal to ESS 3 and not equal to ESS 4. So, that means, so oh, oh, what is the setup of ESS explain that is explain some squares, explain some squares. So, that means for this what is explain some squares by basic formula is explain some square is uh, beta hat beta hat summation uh, x 1 y okay, summation x 1 y for this particular models okay, the, for this particular models. So, this particular model beta 1, beta 1 equal to summation uh, summation uh, x 1 y or y x 1. So, okay. so, this particular setup this particular setup is for bivariate uh, models. Okay. So, when we will go for trivariate model then obviously, you have to add another variables. Okay. Uh, so, for instance uh, uh, for the second variable this ones then ESS equal to beta in fact this will be beta 1 head okay beta 1 head summation x 1 y okay so similarly in this case beta 1 head summation x 1 y plus beta 2 head summation x 1 uh, beta 2 head summation x 2 y so this is how the factor has to be added so that means once you move one after another then something will be added into this particular ess so that means the trend of ess uh, ess will be start increasing when will be involve one after another independent variables. Let us see here once again. So, the structure is like this. So, now uh, here uh, uh, means y uh, x 1. So, y x 1 x 2 then y x 1 x 3 uh, uh, sorry x 2 x 3 
then y x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4. Okay. So, this is uh, I will call it explain some square E s s 1, this I will call it E s s 2, then this I will call it E s s 3, then this will call E s s 4. So, our objective is here uh, it means two specific objective here to for this you know writing uh, all these uh, components. But first thing is uh, what is the S S value and how is the trend? Okay, so the trend will give you whether the trend is constant. So that means this value, this value, this value are same, or it is increasing trend or decreasing trend, or you can say there is a some up and downs. Okay, so that means increasing, decreasing, or decreasing. But out of all these possibilities, most of the cases, or you can say most uh, uh, feasible is that it will be in increasing trend because by default we will see here. Uh, it is how is that structure for ESS 1 it is beta 1 head summation summation o, o, o y a y x 1 so okay summation uh, okay that is better so we will put like this uh, so uh, uh, beta yes right that is right correct beta 1 head summation y x 1 so this one will be beta 1 head summation y x 1 plus beta 2 head summation y x 2 okay then in that case E s s 3 equal to beta 1 head summation y x 1 plus beta 2 head summation y x 2 plus beta 3 head summation y x 3. Okay. So, this is how you have to continue. So, that means you see here every time there is a involvement of something extra. Okay. So, now in that case there is something extra. So, similarly in the case of E s s 4 it will be coming like beta 1 head summation y x 1 plus beta 2 head summation y x 2 plus beta 3 head uh, summation y x 3 plus beta 4 head summation y x 4. Okay. So, like this. So, now in generalize E s s equal to in generalize E s s equal to beta uh, beta head i summation y x i okay. summation y x i okay. beta 1 and i summation y x i. So, this is how the general format uh, 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 of course, it is better you can write like this way beta i head summation y x i i equal to 1 to n. Okay. So, this is the E s format. So, that means, if we if we plot like this way this side is x and this side is E s s then obviously, it will increase like this. Okay, It will increase like this. So, that means, E s s will be when uh, if you plot like this let us say this is x 1 this is x 1 uh, uh, that means, uh, variable uh, number of variables introduced in the system this is x 1 x 2 this is x 1 x 2 x 3 and so on like this way. So, that means, this is point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, point 0.5 like this point 0.1 1 variable, point 0.2 2 variable, point 0.3 3 variable. So, that means, if when there is one variable what is the s s then what, when there is two variable what is the s s then when there is three variable what is the s s. So, like that if we plot all these things then it will be in increasing sequence. So, that means, what is our conclusion is that. So, when we will add one after another variable s s cannot be constant it will increase at a increasing rate in the same times uh, your y uh, uh, t s s will be remain same t s s will be remain same. So, that means, whether it is y x 1 or y x 1 and x 2 uh, uh, or y x 1 x 2 x 3 in every case your you know T S uh, T S S will be same. So, uh, the problem is only for E S S. So, since E S S is changing at a increasing rate and T S S is a constant. So, by default uh, uh, R square cannot be low and followed by F cannot be you know insignificant or F value cannot be low. Okay. The moment we add one after another variable, then obviously, by default or by natural process you will get natural process I mean by mathematical process uh, it will increase the value of r uh, r, okay, r square. So, okay, coefficient determinants or, or adjusted r square. Similarly, f can also increase, but when we add one after another variable, then obviously, you are introducing another coefficient into the system. So, for instance, for a bivariate setups, we have only beta 0 head and beta 1 head. Then, when will we go for trivariate, then beta 0 head, beta 1 head, beta 2 head. So, when we will add another variable, then beta 0 head, beta 1 head, beta 2 head, beta 3 head, like beta 4 head, beta 5 head, like this. So, one, one after another variable, you are getting one after another beta coefficient. So, that means, 
the uh, uh, the requirement is that uh, uh, so every times whatever uh, you know coefficients are involved at what point of time uh, the uh, you know all these coefficients should be highly statistically significant if not then there is a such problem serious problem uh, serious problems and that may be you know one of the uh, one of such problem may be because of multicollinearity issue so now the thing is that so when will we add one after another then obviously tss will be remain constant only thing is yes is changing at the a, a changing at the a, a, a increasing rate. So, obviously, so there is this the second possibility may not be occur uh, you know it is very 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 exceptional case where uh, beta coefficients are you know mm, uh, you know highly significant or all are significant where r is very very low and f is very insignificant. So, this second possibility is very exceptional it is exclusively exceptional, but the first case is very rare. So, that means most of the multicollinearity problems will you know because of this first case. So, that means it is the case where uh, uh, the significance of parameter q parameters may not be significant and you know r square will be uh, uh, on the other side r square will be very high followed by f statistic because here uh, when r square is you know high then obviously you know f will be high which, which we have uh, highlighted already because you see here uh, f is a function of f is a function of rss by rss by ess okay so divide uh, divide uh, this is nothing but if you simplify then this is nothing but 1 by 1 minus r square divided by n minus 1 by n minus k of course of course it has a degrees of freedom here this is n minus 1 and this is n minus k okay so this is how the structure all together uh, all right so now within that particular framework so we like to highlight what is all about this multicollinearity problems okay so let's see what is this structure of multicollinearity so with this basic background so we have to enter or we have to enter the issue of multicollinearity it is a it is a very very strong component and very very serious issue so far as the multivariate model is concerned until unless you uh, go to go go to that particular problem then the problem cannot be considered as the best fitted model it is one of the it is one of the serious problem it is one of the serious problems in the case of multicollinearity uh, multivariate model so when uh, when you will handle the multivariate problem then obviously one of such problem you uh, it is mandatory that you have to check the multicollinearity issue otherwise this model cannot be considered as the best fitted model okay so now so, what is this exact problem of multicollinearity? So, that means we like to now discuss various structure and issues of multicollinearity. So, uh, what are the structures? So, that means why we like to know first what is all about multicollinearity? What is all about multicollinearity? Okay. Second issue is what, uh, what, uh, what are the causes? What are the causes behind multicollinearity? What are the causes behind multicollinearity? Multicollinearity. Okay. This is second problem we have to discuss. Then, then what are the consequences? What are the consequences due to multicollinearity? Due to multicollinearity issue. Okay. Fourth is how to detect how to detect okay so far as the detection is concerned means detection of multicollinearity problem is concerned uh, there are very st standard rules some some of the rules you know by e by inspection you can uh, uh, observe or you can say more, uh, so, uh, some of the points you can highlight there uh, you can highlight that there is a multicollinearity problem so that means this is by inspection only and everybody cannot uh, uh, judge or cannot put to remarks or can identify such type of problem until unless you use a great statistician or econometricians. So, once uh, you have a sufficient knowledge uh, on uh, about this you know statistics and you know econometrics then you know by look you can say that this problem uh, this is the models which has severe multicollinearity problem or minor multicollinearity problem. Okay. Uh, the second issue is 
means so for example, means for this we see how to detect this same. So some of the detection is very easy, some of the detections are very complex. For that you have to go for simple proce I mean typical procedures, uh, procedural measures how to check the you know multi coordinate. Okay. So then five is solutions, solution to multi coordinate. multi coordinate okay solution to multi coordinate so that means here it is means how to detect the multi coordinate this we can fill up multi collinearity okay so far as the solution is concerned you see here um, so once you detect the multi coordinate then obvious pro, uh, obvious obviously there are two questions in your mind first question is is it a natural problem or is it a technical difficulty or artificially you are creating that problem. So, this answer is very complex. Some of the problems by natural process there will be multi coordinate problem and some of the uh, artificial it can be drawn you know by uh, either by knowingly or unknowingly. I will highlight what are the cases you can knowingly uh, you know brings the multi coordinate problem and sometimes there may be unknowingly you know the problem of multi coordinate is coming. So, means both are artificials means you are the culprit to generate the multi coordinate but you know you remember one thing why I am using the term culprit because multi coordinate is problem part of this econometric modeling. So, it is just like a virus ok. So, that virus has to be either clean totally if not then you have to clean at the certain level. So, that the model can be used for uh, best fitters alright. So, now uh, a, 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 a let us assume that the multi coordinate is a serious problem then obviously by default you need to find out some solutions. So, that means just like a virus it will totally you know make your system inconsistent or stagnant you cannot run you cannot work anything. So, that means you need to cure it. So, that means you need to find out a package software package. So, that the virus can be totally removed. So, that is one of the way how you have to go for the solution. Another trick is some of the virus may be in a one particular way. So, still the model by overall uh, uh, in uh, at the broad level it can uh, it can work ok. So, that means sometimes multi coordinate may be theirs, but you have to go ahead with the forecasting or policy use. So, now uh, uh, to make a judgment whether this is ok or this is that is ok. So, it is a very uh, serious issue and for that you need to know what is your objective, what is your problem and how uh, whether you are creating artificially or you can say that to knowingly or unknowingly these are the factors should be in front of you then you can make a judgment whether you have to go ahead with the multi coordinate problem or you have to find out its a complete solution. For instance you see here multi coordinate the standard definition of multi coordinate is that the li linear relationship among independent variable that it that is to with respect to regressors. One of the standard regions, we will discuss details what are the uh, uh, various regions, but one of the standard regions since we are discu uh, dis uh, discussing one of the component about solution, one of the standard region is that the involvement of various independent variable in the systems for a particular dependent variables. You know it is very very tough for a researcher he may not be statistician, may not be econometrician to find a variable which is exactly influence the dependent variables or to find or to find out few variables which is exactly determined by you know dependent variables. If that is the case then obviously, econometric has a zero rule that means, the mo the way we are expecting that there should be error component and there should be you know explained component then there will be total component. If error will be 0 then obviously, the problem complexity will be over there. So, that means, the game will be over there 
the game will be very interesting when there is some type of error component. So, that means, so your objective every time how to minimize the error. So, of course, if you get error free component, then your journey is end there, but you will not, uh, you will get different type of satisfaction if you will have problem and in the by the way you have to get its solution. So, that is a one way very interesting, but it is a very frustrating also, but you that, that is one type of very enjoyment and that is what is econometric modeling all about. So, econometric modeling means the moment you will be entering, so you are expecting that everywhere there is a problem. So, every time so you have to find out the solutions, nowhere you will get the concrete solution. So, if you will find uh, solution for something, then there will be additional problem person. So, at a very, very last stage, you can get a solution by compromising so many things in your uh, uh, problems or with respect to various objectives. Okay. So, why I have mentioned this issue? For instance, for a particular variable, because you are not sure which variables are exactly influenced in a dependent variable. So, you are adding one after another. Then you will find the model itself, you know estimated model is giving very nonsense results. For instance, uh, uh, very few significant R square, very few significant parameters and very high R square. Then obviously, this model is totally unfit and cannot be considered as a policy user or forecasting etcetera. So, that means, uh, you, you are ensure that some variables, because of some variables, this system is totally in the rough side. So, you have to check or you have to detect which particular cool variable is more culprit to damage this particular environment. So, you have to remove that one, that is how the objective all about for uh, multicollinearity. This is what uh, 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 you know artificial and that too sometimes unknowingly issue. Okay unknowingly so means, because you have no idea previously, then by the process of uh, statistical investigation, you come to a conclusion. Okay. But, uh, uh, yeah, you know, um, you know, sometimes knowingly you can create such problems. Take a case of time series modeling. We have so various component under time series modeling. So, when we will go for time series modeling, so we, st uh, we start with one variable, then we create series of various variables. For instance, let us say variable y t, y t is considered as a variable for time series modeling, then you have to create various independent variable like y t minus 1, y t minus 2 uh, like y t minus k. So, now there uh, when we will fit y t as a function of y t minus 1, y t minus 2 up to y t minus k, then obviously, there may be possibility that y t minus 1 as a function of y t minus 2, y t minus 3, y t minus k, again y 3 t, y t 3 minus oh, t t minus 3 may be also function of y t for minus or vice versa y t, y t, uh, t minus 3 may be function of y t minus 2 or t minus 1 or y t. So, there are various such problems are there. So, this particular problem because we need to have such type of time series framework or time series modeling is all about that structure. So, that times you artificially create variable and you have to find a trade solution because the pro game problem game and problem is completely different angles and different setup. So, that is why you are no, you know that there will be obviously multicollinearity problem, still you are going with that particular problem. So, that time your objective is something different, not for multicollinearity issue, but by default the, you will be getting the multicollinearity. But in this particular cross, particularly in the cross sectional modeling setup, so here you know you cannot uh, you, you cannot artificially uh, create such a multicollinearity problem because there is no other uh, there is no such way to create artificially. But most of the cases unknowingly you uh, you know generate some multicollinearity problem, but over the over the time frame you have to find out its solution. So far as the details the you know structure of multicollinearity and solution is concerned, we will discuss in the next class. With this we have to conclude this session. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.